policy is. You know, I know I do. Hello? Right. What's up, Kevin? Uh, hey, Jay. I rang in yesterday asking about saints in the Catholic Church. I don't know if you remember. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, so I won't, I won't go back to that uh, right now. But, I mean, i just like to say that I'm not sure how, like, representative of the Eastern Orthodox view the idea that there is no grace whatsoever in the Catholic Church is, because I'm pretty sure that there would be Eastern Orthodox hierarchs, priests that would say that there are legitimate saints in the post schism Church. Well, that doesn't mean that they're correct, because everybody can find people in every communion with, um, I mean, I can go to James Martin, who says that it's cool to be Skittles. Does that mean that it's true? So what? That's a fallacy. I mean, he's not really uh, an authoritative voice. Of the Catholic, oh, Catholic okay. Catholic. Well, then the the ones that uh, you're citing that say that there's saints in the Catholic Church are not authoritative. Yeah, but I mean, I think the point is that if you look at the Eastern Orthodox Church, there is a really unified position on these issues, is there? Like, I'd have to go to you. I'd have to go to somebody else to figure out what the position oh, is. Oh, so does that mean that in the Roman Catholic Church there's unified positions? Sure. Oh, really? So what's the unified position on Nostra Aetate and Lumen Gentium 16? Lumen Gentium 16. Uh, I'd have to look it up, but are you referring to salvation outside of the uh, visible confines of the Catholic Church? Well, uh, the idea that Muslims, Jews, and Christians all worship the same God. Depending on how you interpret it, that's correct, yes. Ah, interesting. So does Jesus interpret it that way when he's arguing with the uh, Unitarian Pharisees in John 5-9? to well, I mean, in that case, Jesus is trying to hammer home the point that he is the Son of God and that they don't know him because how blind they are to the oh, truth. Oh, but that doesn't apply to Unitarian Muslims, right? But, I mean, if you bear in mind that they, that they believe in the God that appeared to Abraham. But they don't. Not the Trinitarian God. But yeah, but the only the God that appeared to God. Abraham is the Trinitarian God. You don't understand that? Yeah, I do understand that, but we know that as Christians. How are they supposed to know that as Muslims? It doesn't matter. How are they supposed to know that as Jews? The Pharisees. Well, you, so you understand the very argument the them. very argument that you're making is what leads you to the Nostra Aetate, Lumen Gentium 16 position that mm -hmm. you can, uh, that, that ultimately the Trinity is not necessary. Oh, no, it's quite necessary. Well, uh, and you just admitted that the Muslims don't have to believe in the Trinity to worship the same God. I would, uh, I would draw the analogy of the man who's shooting an arrow, and the arrow just misses the mark. How come I Jesus didn't draw that analogy to the, the... How come Jesus sorry? didn't draw that analogy to the Unitarian Pharisees? Well, because Jesus was quite... Um, I suppose he was quite uh, radical in his approach. I mean, he wasn't going to... Uh, oh, so there we go. That's the uh, like So, that so Jesus way. is a radical, but the Roman Catholic Church is smarter and more tempered than the radical Jesus. Well, I mean, Jesus was God. So, I mean, Jesus can use the approach that he wants. I mean, I just don't know... If okay, so the Roman Catholic Church doesn't have to follow using. Jesus' approach. Right. This is, what, this is what you have to go to to make the stupid system work. No, I didn't say that, Jay. What are you talking about? What? I didn't say that we didn't have to use Jesus' approach. I'm just saying... You that literally just said that. You said that Jesus was a radical and that the well, Roman Catholic Church doesn't have to do it. Because he, he made radical claims about himself. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You but understand that this is called mental... Gym. This is the level of mental gymnastics you have to go to to get around Lumen Gentium 16 and Nostra Tate, which is clearly <laughs> saying that Muslims, Christians, and Jews worship the same deity. Not in the same way. It I mean, doesn't matter if it's in the same way. None of that matters. Yeah, but we need to be nuanced in the way in which we read this. We, we can't just which is called reinterpreting and called mental gymnastics, because this is the basis for why the Pope goes and prays in the synagogues and in the and in the mosque towards Mecca. Do you think that you can pray towards Mecca in a mosque? Okay, well then, why did Patriarch Kirill meet with uh, meet with Muslims you, as well? Why did did I? I oh, oh, so that's why? a two two quo quo. Can you pray in a mosque towards Mecca? Sure, to foster goodwill amongst the religions. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You can pray in a mosque towards Mecca, according to this Roman Catholic. You hear that, everybody? Wait, me, me or the Pope? Oh, so the Pope can do it, but you, like, this whole religion is so retarded that you literally no, are saying really, that, it's so, you literally said that, so the Pope can do it, but you're not supposed to. 
Well, no, because I don't represent the religion. The Pope does represent the religion. Yes, you do. You're bound by the same canons and restrictions as the Pope. What are you talking about? I'm not a member of the church hierarchy. Yeah, so, so anybody, <laughs> you understand the canon law applies to you? How does What happens to a, a normal Roman Catholic if they procure an abortion? Excommunication, I believe. So you literally just denied that by saying that it doesn't apply to you, if, uh, if it, but it only applies to the Pope. So the can No, no, I'm saying that it's unwise for a Catholic. No, now it's unwise. Now you've changed it from unwise. Now you're saying unwise, and you said, but before you, it wasn't unwise. You say you're contradicting yourself. No, not really. I think I'm, I'm quite clear what I'm saying, that the Pope can use his judgment to decide whether or not he's going to participate in certain ecumenical meetings. Uh, did it, I don't think it's a good idea for... Sorry? Well, what does is, what is Mortalium Animo say about any participation in those meetings? Ah, but you see, I don't think that Mortalium animus is binding on the rest of the church oh, fraternity. Mm -hmm, yeah. I mean, so really your position literally can change... So in, the, in 1928... It's apostasy mm -hmm. to do that, but post-Vatican II, it's okay. Well, you need to bear in mind that the church is living. The church is... Yeah, so it can contradict. Entity. Yeah, so your it's position, yeah, that's what it means to be living, is that you can literally contradict from one day to the next, correct? Yeah, good job, dude. There you go. That is Roman Catholicism to a T. I want everybody to notice that, clip that. That's what you get with Roman Catholicism. So it starts with... I just want to prove that there's Catholic saints and Orthodox saints and that we all have the same saints. Then it turns into it's not uh, bad for the Pope to go pray in synagogues and mocks towards Mecca, even though the ancient canons say you're excommunicated. And he says, well, I'm not the Pope. Unbelievable. This is the stupidity of Roman Catholics. <laughs>